you set foot on this marsh, it's just you at one with the wildlife and the birds. Areas like this can have a, a real unique wild quality. Morning flight in particular, I never tire of. It's when the whole marsh starts to wake up. From absolute stillness in the dark, you start to see a few wading birds appear and the movement grows and you hear the beating of wings above your head and the whistling of wings of waders and the duck. As the sun rises, it's absolute magic. Wildfang is strictly controlled according to rules which are enforced by the wildfanging clubs. And it's a system that works. It's a system that works because the birds are coming to these sites in increasing numbers year after year. The whole essence of wildfowling is you have to time your shooting trips to coincide with the movements of wild birds. Wildfowling takes place predominantly early in the morning or later in the evening when the ducks and geese are moving between their respective feeding and roosting grounds. It can take place during the day where the, 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 the ducks and geese are moved around the estuary by the advancing high tide, which is known as a tide flight. Environments such as this, particularly estuary environments, areas where you have uh, strong tides, uh, one of the key, the key uh, fact is safety. You don't want to be coming out here to environments on, on this marsh if you don't know what you're doing. There is a danger of becoming trapped by very soft areas of mud or, or quicksand on some estuaries. You, you really need to be very, very familiar uh, with the safe access routes. I ain't going in there. <laughs> I ain't going in there now. There are, yes, there are risks. There will always be risks. Uh, but the wildfire is the expert at confronting those risks, if you like, and assessing those risks. A competent gun dog is an integral part of, um, of, of the wildfowling experience. Unlike other forms of shooting, they're not there to um, beat or push the birds up or flush birds. They are there to perform what could often be very, very difficult retrieves from areas of deep water, areas where you've got soft mud. These, these dogs, when they're out wildfowling, they can, you know, they can cover vast amounts of ground and you know, they can really you know, go out retrieving with some great enthusiasm.
I think wildfires are vitally important to uh, the health of an estuary such as this. We're the eyes and ears, you know, we're the people that are out there, we'll be the first people to spot if there's any changes in populations of birds. We can also help to sort of monitor uh, unusual activity, maybe illegal activity. As, as, as wildfowlers and as people that, that, that shoot, you know, we want the same thing that many conservationists want. You know, we want to see a healthy natural environment which is absolutely full of wildlife and full of bird life. There are many wildfowlers up and down the UK working with uh, county wildlife organisations and, and national conservation bodies such as uh, Natural England or, or the RSPB. You're amongst wild birds, you're not, you're not watching wild birds, you're not a mile away with a telescope watching, them. you're in their environment uh, and that is just fundamentally exciting. It is learning how the birds move in relation to their patterns of migration. Being uh, around at about uh, pre-dawn, when you're seeing the marsh wake up and the movements of birds that some people never see in their life. Uh, it is negotiating tides. It's the, even just getting on, on and off these places because it's quite physically demanding is a challenge in itself. It's, it's having some really tasty meat to take home. It's all these things combined which just make it the, the best experience.